Was there any doubt that Devin Williams was going to slam the door shut with the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning in St. Louis? Six in a row. Any doubt at all. And the Brewers continue to move up in the National League. That story more coming up next here on a joyful Locked on Brewers. You are Locked on Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So it's always, a, always in a better mood around the house when the Brewers get a victory. And our team's in first place by 12 games. Said no one ever that the Brewers, 12 games up? Have they ever in their franchise ever been 12 games up? Anytime in their franchise, 12 games up in the division. <laughs> the St. Louis Cardinals. That's great. I'm just enjoying this victory. You get to the bottom of the ninth inning, and Devin Williams comes in, base is loaded. You think, oh, no, here we go. Strikes out Goldie, and he strikes out Carlson. Game, set, and match to the Brewers. And they take the opener, and they kind of own Bush Stadium right now. They do. They've won their seven in a row. We'll get to all this. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I hope you're feeling as good as I am right now. And I know, I'm, the, I'm setting myself up for one big heartbreak in October. I know I am. I know it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I, I just know it. Things are just going so well right now that I'm setting myself up for disaster. I hate feeling that way, but being a sports fan here, especially the Milwaukee Brewers, I've come accustomed to that. Come accustomed to heartbreak. Longtime sportscaster here in the state of Wisconsin, proud host of Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Thank you, all your everydayers, for listening and watching our video. We'll tell you all the places you can get the video and download the podcast coming up here in a little bit. First of all, this episode brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, get this deal here right here. All FanDuel's customers get $5, uh, bet $5, and you get three-week free trial of the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube or YouTube TV. Again, bet 5 bucks, three-week free trial of the NFL Sunday ticket. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started today. And the Brewers jumped out early, something they've been doing. Lately, getting out early, <laughs> you know, we like that. There's sometimes they haven't, but they're out to a six game winning streak after that three, two win over St. Louis. Yeah. They've owned Bush stadium, uh, only 30,000 fans there at Bush stadium, the lowest attendance at Bush stadium since Bush stadium was built for a third time. So lowest in the non pandemic games. I don't count the pandemic year anyway, but the non-pandemic years. Well, I guess there was nobody in there in 2020. They li That's right. First part of 2021, they were limiting us at games. Remember, you had to keep a distance. Uh, I'm not going to go down that road, but that's how it was. Anyway, Bush Stadium, uh, Bush Stadium 3, lowest attendance in a non-pandemic game, this one right here. Uh, 30,000, and you know, a lot of Brewer fans down there going down there, enjoying the trip. It's a long, boring trip to St. Louis. It is. But not when your team wins and holds on and wins this game. Now, yeah, they're 20, 21 games over the 500 mark. They are going into, the, into this uh, podcast tonight. They are tied with the Phillies and Dodgers with 52 losses. Now, the Dodgers... As I was doing this podcast in the seventh inning, they were trailing Seattle 3-2. Hopefully, Seattle hung on for the win there. And if that's the case, the Brewers will be in a first-place tie in the National League with the Phillies. And then the Dodgers will be in third. How about that? How about that? It seems like any time I do get ahead of myself with the Dodgers, they find a way to come back and win. So we'll just say, as of right now, it's 52, 52, and 52 between the Dodgers, Brewers, and Phillies with losses. How about that? And the last three games, yeah, it's not been real exciting on offense. 
They've scored seven runs in the last three games, all of them victories, 2-1 Saturday night, 2 nothing on Sunday. And then this one, looked like it was going to be another 2-0 game, ended up a 3-2 final. A 3-2 final. But this game, going down to St. Louis, the Brewers were underdogs today. Somebody tweeted at me, Brewers are underdogs in this game. Bet it all on the Brewers. Like I've said, if you bet on the Brewers this year, you are a rich man. You are a rich man. How many times have they been underdogs, especially on the road, coming through big time? And they had Frankie Montes on the hill. Yeah, Frankie, I didn't think, through his first three performances with the Brewers, was all that great. Now, in this last one, he did show some signs of being better, although I didn't think it was all that great. The Brewers organization praised him. I didn't think it was all that great. But Frankie went seven innings on one hit. Wow. Frankie continues to pitch like that. Then we're going to have a discussion on who the four starters or three starters were gonna, are going to be in the postseason if Frankie continues to pitch that way. I'll just bottle it up and take it while I can. And I'm sure Cincinnati, the Reds, are looking at it like, oh, we gave away, we helped the Brewers win this division because we gave them Frankie Montes. Brewers are 4-0 in games that Montes has started so far because they have supported them offensively in three of those starts. This one, Brewers didn't sc- only scored three runs, and they won the game. But it was Montes' turn to do the heavy lifting, and he did. And that bullpen, Williams comes on in the ninth inning, and, yes, yeah, second and third, intentional walking up, bases loaded, Goldschmidt's up, and you're thinking, oh, boy, is Goldie going to line a little looping single to left field, and there goes the ball game? No, he strikes out. And then Dylan Carlson comes up. Is he going to end the ball game with his 203 batting average, 19 home runs? He strikes out. Game, set, and match to the Brewers. Man, six in a row. Six in a row. What is it, like 11 of 14 that they've won? Now, I am worried about this because if you're a Brewer fan, you're always going to worry about something. I do worry about this. If the Brewers are playing such good baseball right now, and there's areas for improvement, but if they're shooting their best shot right now and you know they play so well right now and through September, I'm getting my head of myself there, and then October, they fall flat. And then we're looking back in October we're saying, God, where was this? Where was the way they played in September? Where was the way they played in August? Where was the way they played in July? Well, July, they had a losing month. But August, when they're playing these heavy hitters. And I in St. Louis, yep, they're a division opponent. They're not World Series caliber by any means, but they're still a division opponent. They're a rival. And the Brewers have won seven straight down there, so it's still not going to be easy when you play those guys because technically they're in the wild card chase as well, and they got something to play for, even though they got some teams to leap over. So, yeah, uh, not a bad team they played. Bad team that's underachieving. They're a few games under the 500 mark. But I do worry if we're going to get to October and look at this team and say, oh, man, they played their best baseball in the middle part of August. Remember when they swept Atlanta? They took those last two things, games against the Dodgers. Boy, that Cleveland Guardians team that's still in the playoffs. Remember, they swept them in three straight games. And here we are (laughs) getting bounced. I don't want to think that way. But part of me does think, are they shooting their best shot right now? Because things are going so well. Yeah, offensively, they can step it up. They're going through a little bit of one of those Brewer things right now. But their pitching is picking them up. Their pitching has just been so good here in the last few games. So good. Just outstanding. Everyone going out. The Savali's making his solid starts, and now Montes is picking it up. Montes is picking up. Two more games left in the series, and then they go to Oakland. But I'm telling you, chasing down, I think more and more people are are buying into this, chasing down the Phillies and Dodgers because they're right there with them. Might not have the payroll, may not have the talent, but chasing them down. Talk a little bit later on the show about 
what Reese Hoskins had to say about playing for Pat Murphy, who's got this team 21 over the 500 mark. And I don't want to hear anybody else in the discussion for manager of the year. I don't want to hear anybody. No, none of that. Nobody. Not one name. I don't want to hear about anybody. San Diego, Baltimore, no. San Francisco, no. Nobody. I don't want to hear any names. Uh, Arizona, no. I don't want to hear any names associated with manager of the year. It should be unanimous. And if he doesn't win, unanimous. Manager of the year. I don't know what to tell you. We got to find who those voters are that don't. Because Murphy has just been amazing. 20, 21 games over 500 mark with this team. I mean, that's just crazy. 21 up. God, it just it looks so, it looks fantastic there in the standings, doesn't it? When you look, well, we don't look at the newspaper anymore, but when you look at the paper or your wherever you get your box scores online, you know, look at the standings, and you see that Milwaukee on top. Of, man, I, when I was a kid, he's looking at that and see Milwaukee on top. And then by August, it would be Milwaukee in fifth place. But here in August, seeing the Milwaukee Brewers on top, it, and, and we've experienced a lot of that lately. I just never get old. It never gets old. I look at it and, ah, it's like a beautiful painting, seeing the Brewers in first place in the division. Yeah, never take winning the division title lately. Even if they don't come in first place, uh, get the best record in the National League or the second best winning a division title, don't take it lightly. They never take it lightly. But they do have something to prove in October. We'll say that. They do have something to move to prove in October. When we come back, we'll talk about Murph and what was said about him recently. Pat Murphy, our manager of the year. That's next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Thank you, all the everydayers, for following us along, getting on Google, Spotify, Apple, wherever you download your podcast. We are on all those platforms. We're the number one Brewers podcast on the internet because of you great Brewers fans out there. You made us the number one Brewers podcast. So if you're watching us on YouTube, there's all sorts of places you can get the audio version of this. And you can have your presets on that. You can uh, favorite whatever. However, you go to your, your audio platforms, get it there for you in the morning, favorite it, whatever you have to do. And, of course, if you're listening on the audio version, go to YouTube. Please go to YouTube, search Locked On Brewers on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. That alerts you every time we drop an episode here on Locked On Brewers. Hit the like button, please. Whatever you can do to help the channel. All the content is free. We're just trying here. We're just sitting here talking to Brewer Baseball with you Brewer fans. You long-suffering Brewers fans, each and every one of you guys, all of us, we're pulling through this team, wearing our Brewers jerseys, pulling through with these guys, trying to get these guys a series win this year. Get them to the World Series. Heck, get them into the Divisional Series this year. Let's start there. Let's start there by winning one of these top two spots. All right, FanDuel. FanDuel, and the Brewers were plus 115 on the money line on Tuesday. I hope you all cashed in like uh, some of us did. Um, and if you did with FanDuel, all the better. FanDuel's got a little something differently for you right now. Through September 22nd, I was talking about this earlier, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You know what I really like for the Sunday ticket? I love those late afternoon starts because there's like three games going on three or four games going on, flip back through all three or four of those games. Usually the Packers, you know, if they have a noon start or a, a Sunday night football, you know, there's three or four games <laughs> when you're trying to get, you know, you're, 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 you might have a, a dime or two. No, I shouldn't say a dime. That's too much. Um, you might have a couple of pennies on these games, those late games, Sunday ticket, those 415 start Eastern, 315 Central. YouTube and YouTube TV, you get a free trial of the NFL Sunday ticket right now when you bet five bucks on FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Of course, with the YouTube TV uh, base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season game Sunday, out of market TV. Need a Google account or and a current form of payment? 
You can cancel every time, but take advantage of this chance to get the Sunday ticket for three weeks. FanDuel.com slash locked on and go there and get all the deals. Details. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Brewers have game two coming up in St. Louis, 645. The broadcast on Sirius XM, the SXM app. Search Brewers. You get on 165. 165. Well, Hey, if there's postseason, you'll get three more postseason games. Well, let's hope it's more than 165. All 162 of the regular season of Locked On Brewers on Sirius XM, the SXM app. Great partners with us here on Locked On Brewers. So the six game winning streak, seven straight, seven straight wins in St. Louis. I think that is just amazing. So Pat Murphy was on foul territory recently and he was asked, what's it like playing for Pat Murphy? What's it like to be playing for Pat Murphy? And he says, you know what? What is like playing for Murphy? He puts a smile on your face. He, keep thing, he keeps things light. When things might be going in one direction, Murphy keeps things light. He's a baseball guy. The guy's been in every baseball. This is coming from Hoskins. He's been in every baseball situation possible. So when he steps on a diamond and looks at the diamond and sees the game, he's has seen it all. And this is Reese Hoskins talking. He says, Murphy knows we have to do things a little differently. And Hoskins knows this because he was in Philadelphia where they could buy a, a Bryce Harper and guys like that. All right. Although they didn't pay for him. They did not pay for to keep Hoskins. The Brewers did. They did not want Hoskins anymore, but the Brewers did. But, uh, the Brewers have to play, according to Hoskins, and we know this, have to play differently. We have to cause chaos. We have to run. We have to steal bases. We have to bunt. We have to do all these little things. Basically, what we've been saying all year long is the Brewers have such a small margin of error. They got to do all the little things to win a ball game. That's what they have to do. And Hoskins said fundamentals. Fundamentals. If you love fundamentals, yeah, there's sometimes the Brewers – We'll sway away from that a little bit, but fundamental baseball is what it's all about. Fundamental baseball is what it's all about. Um, And that's Pat Murphy realizing that you have to do the small things. Now, didn't Craig Council try to do that? Now, we all think Craig Council is a smart guy, and he is a good baseball guy. Whether we dislike him going to Chicago or not, whatever. And I think we're pretty much over it by now because the Brewers are winning with Pat Murphy. I think we're all over that. But Council, a smart guy, smart baseball manager, okay? Don't you think he saw that, wow, if this team, I got to do a little things. I got to play fundamentally sound baseball. I got to bunt. I got to steal. How come Murphy, the old-time baseball guy, is not doing what these old-time baseball guys like to do, sit back and watch for the three-run home run? Like Girl Weaver likes used to do. No, Murphy likes to get guys in. Double steal. You got runners at first and third. Murphy's stealing second base. They were doing that Sunday. You know, if there's a fast runner, if Terang is on first and there's a runner at third, you know Terang is a threat to go to second base. You didn't feel that under council. You didn't. And I don't want to, you know, is it because the bases, the, the, the rules have been made so... You could steal bases more, maybe some of that. The rules in baseball where you get more stolen bases, the bigger bases, which I didn't think was necessary. But the Brewers are taking advantage of those rules if they are. Okay? And they're stealing bases and doing the little things. Craig Council's teams, I never thought, did the little things to win games. Murphy's team is doing the little things. Again, can they keep this going in October? And maybe in the November, we'll figure that out later on. But so far, Murphy pushing all the right buttons, and you haven't heard one person say, God, I wish Ricky Weeks could take over. And that was my greatest fear when the season started. With When they announced Murphy and co-pilot Ricky Weeks, he was going to be the assistant manager, basically, the bench coach, because that's what the assistant manager is. That's what the bench coach is. He is like the assistant coach. He's the co-pilot. Well, it looked like it was going to be a co-pilot because 
I didn't want Brewer fans sitting here saying if the Brewers were slumping, hey, let's get Ricky Weeks in there. Let's get Ricky Weeks because everybody likes the the backup quarterback, the backup guy, the assistant coach. Everybody loves that guy. Okay. But there's been none of that. There's been none of that. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen in the future. Okay. We're right. And that's just the way the business goes for managers. You know, we love these guys once. I love Mike Budenhoser. We loved him in 2021. Maybe some of you didn't, but they won an NBA championship. And after a while, we, people couldn't wait to get him out of town fast enough for the Milwaukee Bucks. And there's been other Brewers managers like that. There's been a love fest with a lot of guys. Tom Treblehorn, George Bamberger, Harvey Keen, Phil Garner. Okay. There's been, I don't know if there was really a love fest with Ned Yost, but there's been other guys who there's been a love fest with early on. And then a few years later, that kind of wears off a little bit. And we can't wait to get those guys out of town. And that probably is going to happen. That was every manager and coach in sports. You know, Murphy is the right guy for right now. What he's going to be like as a manager next year with this team and how this team changes because teams are always evolving and how he's going to be two years from now, I don't know. But I know right now, Murphy is the perfect manager for this team. And I heard some rumblings too that Mike Schilt at the Padres could get some consideration for manager of the year, please. Please, oh, how many how many guys have you bought on that team so far? Not Mike Schilt, but the front office there. How many are you paying Manny Machado? What are you paying some of these guys? I'll give you that San Diego Padres Mike Schilt for manager of the year. I don't want to hear that garbage. There is nobody who's done more with less. There is nobody who's done a better job in baseball with their team. And you know how I feel about these postseason awards. They don't mean a thing about me because I want to see championships at this point. But gosh darn it. You know, the Brewers have been screw- Brewers are screwed at least three or four times a manager of the year with council. He should have won at least three or four times. I'll be darned if they're going to screw Pat Murphy on this. Better be, he better be getting all 32 votes. Every vote. Well, whatever, however many votes there are, should all go to Murphy. Murphy should not get not one Vote. Every vote. Mike Schilt. Give me a break. Mike Schilt for, man, because his team is all of a sudden starting to win. Come on. I do think, though, as I said before, postseason award, uh, uh, postseason should factor in on some of these awards, like manager of the year. Like if you blow through the regular season and fall flat in your face like the Brewers have done, I think that should count with manager of the year. In the next case, Kelso wouldn't have got a few manager of the year. He would have probably half that a little bit. Those four would have probably been down to two or maybe one. But it should be not only the regular season, the whole I always felt like that way. Postseason awards. Why aren't why isn't everything included on that? Because what counts most is the postseason. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Down the stretch we come after this timeout. Prize picks. America's number one daily fantasy sports app, over 5 million active members. Prize picks, the easiest, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, prize picks, you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less two to six player stat projections and watch those winnings roll in. Maybe like Terang over on hits uh, on, on Wednesday night or, yeah, Wednesday night, maybe like that. Uh, whatever it is, pick more or less two to six player staff projections and watch the winnings roll right in. Get in all the daily action with your friends. Become part of Price Picks community today. But first, you, what you got to do is you got to download the Price Picks app today. Price Picks, use the promo code Locked On MLB. That first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Again, Locked On MLB, Price Picks, deposit match up to 100 bucks. Price Picks, run your game. With the folks at Prize Picks. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers. Brewers play game two of their series coming up with the Cardinals on Wednesday night. I, almost, I, I lose track of what day of the week is because the Brewers didn't play Monday. And today is the first game of the series because this, this series goes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Because I always think in terms of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but the Brewers had, had Monday off. So this is Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I haven't had a chance to talk about Sal Freelich. And we're going to get to him. We're going to get to him on one of the coming podcasts. 
Uh, and Freelich had a big night. Freelich gets a lot of hate on Twitter. He certainly does. But we're going to talk about Sale coming up here sometime here in the next week or so. I, I threw out a little tweet on that and all that about where you are with Sal Freelick as an everyday player. Hey, everybody, the Brewers got the job done. Brewers got the job done. Trevor McGill was reinstated. The Brewers are doing so well out of the bullpen. They have an abundance of talent out there in the bullpen. Elvis Peguero, even though at times he has struggled, the overall Elvis Peguero, I don't know if I have a complete faith in him, but he did get sent down to AAA. He did have an option there. So he got sent down. We'll probably see him back up here in September, I would say. Um, whether he's going to, you know, that postseason roster is going to, that'll be curious to see when that comes. Because I think we all think that Brewers are going to go to the postseason. But when that postseason roster comes, who's going to be left off the postseason roster? We don't have to answer that question yet. We got a one or two seed to win. Hey, everybody, join me on Google, Spotify, Apple. That's where you download. Wherever you download your podcast, Locked on Brewers is there. And, of course, our growing YouTube page. Search Locked on Brewers. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell that alerts you every time we drop an episode on Locked on Brewers. Hit me up, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. See, some of you like to DM me to ask for your questions to be answered. Hey, that's a great way to get to me as well. If you want to DM me anytime, 24 hours a day, I'm not saying I'm answering 24 hours a day, but I could. I could be up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you might, when you wake up in the morning, you might have that answer for me. But I always check my tweets. I check my DMs. And you guys ever have a question and you want to ask me privately, go right ahead, man. I'm there for you. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Follow me on Twitter. A little tomorrow night after game two of the series, this is Chuck Freeman, Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Have yourself a great Wednesday, everybody.